Hey, it's me, Jim Farrell, back from 3 Your Skill with another update for a specific tool, the DM Measure tool. With the DM Measure tool, you can visualize and render the measurements and the angles of the Measure and Construct tool in Cinema 4D. And now you're also able to calculate the surface area of an object or specific polygon selections. And the DM Measure tool is no longer a Python generator, it is now a real plugin. And I would say let's dive right away into Cinema 4D and have a look what this plugin can do for you. So here back in Cinema 4D, I prepared a small scene with an object. We want to measure this object. So you simply download the plugin and install it into your plugin folder. Uh, so I'll um, the folder which is corresponding to your Cinema 4D version. So it's compatible with, with version R19 up to 2023. And there is a, a folder for version R19 to 21 and 23 to 2023. So, okay, let's measure this object. I have put the icon files from the extensions DM measure and the DM service into my interface and simply call the DM measure tool and create first a new measurement. You can see a measure object is created and put as a child under the DM measure tool just for organization and put into this link. Um, so it's using always three points of the DM measure object from the, uh, from the measure object and we are already in this measure tool um, mode here in this measure and construct tool mode when we simply activate here snapping and I can snap set the first point. I want to measure this distance so I need the the red the red distance for the DM measure. So shift and left mouse button and then I need the third point to determine the plane so the dimension needs this plane to create a perpendicular axis to this plane so now I can go into my line properties and can pull this line outside and here's the inner pause I can yeah determine here make it a little bit more in a cat style here I can pull it above so yeah, it's working uh, better than the old tool. So the text is now perfectly aligned to this line here. So this makes it a little bit better to work with. So I have here set my first line. And this resolution parameter here on the top is for these lines here, you can see. So the measure tool is no longer working with splines because, yeah, this is a little bit difficult to cover all the the, the requirements of third-party renderers, so I decided to just uh, use here polygonal objects. And these are the line properties, and here are the text properties. We can set here the size of the text, the text center here, so on the x-axis, and here's another text position. The x-axis doesn't work, this is this parameter. And simply you can make the text on the way axis so it's it doesn't matter if this is so so it's all working on the x axis perfectly aligned to this line here and the set axis so i make it a little bit higher and rotate it 90 degrees or minus 90 degrees better to say and yeah, a little bit on this uh, on the set axis like this. And now I need also a material for this. And here you can also turn off the units and also determine how much digits you want to have. In this case, it just has one digit. We can say here no digits. So it rounds it to, yeah. And that's cool. 
So we create, I can give it a material here, line material and also a text, mat a font material. And yeah, that's it. Now I create another measurement. So for this oblique side, close this, create another measurement. And I'm already here in this mode. So first I go back to my old measurement and hide this measurement. I can hide the measure object so that it's not over, this, that the scene is not overloaded. So simply hide the measure object. And I also can hide this measure up, uh, this measurement itself. But now I create another measurement for this thing, this side here. I snap it here. I'm already in this tool. I snap it now. Create here a line and this. And here also a third point for the. But as you can see, it doesn't snap perfectly to this corner. So that's the reason why I added this height measurement. So now I can exactly snap it here to this and can bring it back here. Um, yeah, and now I pull out here the other thing here. As you can see here, in this case, it's also perpendicular to this plane here. But in this case, it looks a little bit weird for, yeah, for this uh, visualization. So I use here now the world align thing. So it uses the world coordinates. So in this case, I have to uh, drag it on the set uh, X axis. As you can see, it goes straight along the uh, X axis. And now I have to rotate the text outside. So we have to try it out. Sometimes we have to flip it or sometimes we have to rotate it completely uh, around. So we have to try it. And also on the set axis a little bit outside. As you can see, if you create more than one measurement, so you have to drag for every me measurement the material inside. This is a little bit uncomfortable. So that's the reason why this use global materials comes into the game. So check the use global materials and every measure object is now uh, a measurement is now using the global materials. So I can drag it for the lines. So you can see now they are using now the global materials. So I just have to do it one time for a uh, one time and yeah, every measurement gets these, this material. So now I want to hide this measure object and now I want to measure um, the angle as well. So I quickly hide this um, for a moment and create another measurement. And here for I activate the angle mode. So now I'm visualizing the angle. So I um, make this distance and this one, as you can see here, an angle and is created. And as soon as you check this angle mode, as you can see here, this text properties um, disappearing and angle mode is appearing. So I make this angle radius, uh, arc radius a little bit uh, bigger. And I can here also determine the text size or the text position on the set axis a little bit more in front because of this slipping here. And yeah, the text position you can use this, make it a little bit smaller, maybe like this. Or you use, make it also, you can use the arc position on the X axis and so forth, or on the, on the way axis. And here you can use also the tangential mode. So click tangential mode. As you can see here, we have to bring this back and the tangential mode is pretty cool because now you have simply here text radius and you can rotate it like that around this arc. This is also a very quick possibility to visualize here the angle. You can also turn off the degree and also you can, um, yeah, the digits, how many digits you want to have or no digits. 
Yeah. Um, here I make the line a little bit thicker. So as you can see, now I bring back my other measurements. So which I hide it. And let's say I have, uh, I want to give that, especially this measurement, another texture. So I simply go inside this and put maybe the red one inside and say here override global. So now it overrides here the global materials and uses an, just for this maybe another texture. So this is also very comfortable. Yeah, that's pretty it for this tier measure tool. And also you can use here uh, different things like kilometers or meters or centimeters. So it is, it's depending on your project settings. So here in the project settings, you see at the moment you're working in the project scale with centimeters. If I turn this to inches, as you can see here, um, this whole distance is now inches and the DM measure tool recalculates it into centimeters. So if I turn this to inches, as you can see, it's 400 and 61 inches like before with the uh, centimeter things. It was also 461 centimeters, as you can see, centimeters and centimeters. It's also 460. So, and also when you turn this in the project setting, if you switch this maybe to millimeters, as you can see, the DM measure tool um, still converts it to the correct values. As you can see here, if I, um, yeah. To, so as you can see, millimeters. And also if you switch here in project settings back to millimeters, it's always changing here things here. So this is pretty good. So everything works fine here in this case. Okay, uh, let's turn, switch back to centimeters. Okay, and if you render this, as you can see here, uh, also here in the angle mode here, I forgot, uh, I have to bring this um, text position a little bit in front, so it works here with rendering. Yeah, looks pretty cool. Um, so now I want to show you, introduce uh, this service area. So if I have this room here, I select this polygon or better to say an N-gon, this is an N-gon. And I can calculate now from polygon selections. If I select an object and no polygon is selected, then it, it calculates from the complete object, but it has to be a polygon object. So here now I simply select the polygon and say here DM service and now he says to which units I want to calculate. Now I want to calculate in square meters of course. I choose meters and say calculate. As you can see it's creating a extrude NURB with, um, with a an extrude NURB with, with a text spline. And yeah, it says here A is 29.46 square meters. So pretty cool. And it's a very quick way to visualize here the, the square meter of the object as well. Um, and you still can change here the text if you want. So this is also working maybe if I select here this polygon and this and this polygon and say here calculate and say here square meters calculate. As you can see it calculates here also the square meters so it's 
11 square meters. Yeah, and if you just select, uh, don't select any polygon, you simply call it square meters. And now he renders the complete object. So it's 187.42 square meters. Always round it to two digits after the comma. Yes, that's what, that was everything for the dimension tool. The dimension tool is available on my, uh, on my, from my website. So yeah, and all the customers who already purchased the dimension tool will get a uh, circular mail with the update for free. And yeah, I hope you have fun and I wish you a good day and yeah, see you later.